is Nimi really over Ricky? Well, if you've ever seen any love triangle ever, then you probably already know the answer to that question. Let's get into it. So the episode starts off with EJ still being extremely salty over the fact that Ricky got the role of Troy over him. And unfortunately for him, things only get worse from here. Like, way worse. Because now it's time for the read through. AKA time to see Ricky play the role that you wish you had with your girlfriend. <laughs> Oh, this is gonna be amazing. So after EJ gets done being very petty by switching the name cards around, he finally accepts his fate and decides to get this over with. Now, he isn't the only one not liking this. Nini isn't looking forward to this either. Or is she? But <laughs> we'll get into that more later. You wanna talk about the most awkward hand-holding of all time? Might be my first time when I actually cringed just watching people hold hands. Also, a little non-important tidbit, but once the director started singing one of the songs from High School Musical, it kind of sounded oddly familiar to me. And I wasn't sure why that was because like I told you guys before, I've never seen any of the High School Musical movies. But then I remembered, oh wait a second, South Park had an episode about High School Musical before. That's where I heard it from. South Park coming through with the clutch assist for me yet again. So once that disaster was finally over with, Nini starts to get text messages from someone. And EJ being the insecure guy that he is, he automatically assumes that the guy that she's texting must be Ricky. I mean, who else could it be? Well, when you trust your partner, it could be literally anybody. But when you don't, it can only be one. That cheating And if EJ wasn't already insecure enough, the director decided to add a kiss to the ending of this script. A kiss between Troy and Gabriella, AKA Ricky and Nini. Now keep in mind, Gina is observing all of this and eavesdropping on all of this. And I only bring this up because it will come into play later. So just, just keep that in mind. So once EJ hears this news, he obviously has to do something about it, right? He can't just stand by and let all of this go down. What kind of boyfriend would that make him? One that's secure and trusting in his relationship? Child, please. We gotta go steal Nini's phone. End of story. And that's exactly what EJ asks his cousin to do for him. But before we can get to that, we first have to get through this painful display of Ricky pretending he knows how to dance. And Nini is not happy about this. And she calls him out for only being there for her and not because he loves musicals, which to be fair, is 100% true. And she tells Ricky if he truly cares about her, then he'll let EJ play the role. She basically told him to quit. And Ricky apparently took those words to heart because he tells everyone that that's exactly what he plans to do. And there's Gina yet again in the background, by the way, listening in on everything going on. Just like a cobra just waiting to strike. And Gina realizes that if Ricky stays in the show, that Nini is likely to quit. You see where this is going, right? That means that she can swoop in and play Gabriella. And that's exactly what she intends to do. Now here is where things start to get a bit confusing. Because once Nini finds out that Ricky is planning to quit the show, <laughs> instead of doing cartwheels and celebrating, she looks disappointed. She looks like her dog just died. And this is genuinely the first time that she has ever even hinted towards possibly still wanting Ricky around. Once he quits the play, that makes literally no sense. The only thing that would make this make sense is if she was just acting this entire time. Acting like she was over Ricky. Acting like she hated Ricky. I mean, she is an actress, so I guess that would make sense. But my God, are you a damn good actress? Because you damn sure had me fooled. So Gina goes to try to talk Ricky into staying in the play by giving him a bunch of fake compliments and smiles. And unfortunately, Ricky is a guy, so obviously this worked wonders. And Ricky starts to practice his dance moves determined to get better. And he shows this off in the library and Nini couldn't help but 
notice. Is that a smile I see? I mean, obviously she's just smiling at the fact that he's getting so much better at his dancing. Right? Right. So now it's time to get into my favorite scene of the episode, where Nene runs into EJ's cousin and they both sing a beautiful song together. One that clearly relates directly to Nene's situation. More specifically, her and Ricky and her possibly not being over him and possibly also a little bit of regret. And she damn near teared up while singing this too. So you just know that it hit her straight in the feels. And let me tell you, she's not the only one. This song got me all up in my feels, people. Specifically one line that really, really got to me. And I, I, and I wanna say this line to you guys, and I quote, if I had everything, would it mean anything? Now that is a mood, and it's a mood that I have way too often. But of course, before they can get done singing a song, Ricky comes in, and he came in as soon as Nene started singing, so he pretty much heard the entire thing, at least the really important parts. And I think for the first time in a really long time, he's probably thinking he still has a chance with her still. I mean, if you were him, how could you not after hearing that song? I'm not sure which song I liked more between that song and you know from the first episode. Probably this song though, but either way, I think it's a good thing that we're only two episodes in and this show is already providing me with some really good music that I always go back and listen to repeatedly after the fact. That is a really good sign. Now, fortunately, EJ's cousin decides to not steal Nini's phone. Unfortunately though, Gina had no problems whatsoever stealing her phone and putting it right in EJ's bag. And thus was the start of a very menacing and evil friendship. Because it looks like Gina and EJ are going to work together to take down Nene and Ricky. I don't know whether to be excited or scared. Probably a little bit of both though. Yeah, definitely a little bit of both. But yeah, people, that was the episode. And um, I have to say, I enjoyed it just as much if not maybe a little bit more than I enjoyed the first episode. I'm really liking the music and I'm really liking the characters which is a really big deal for me. I mean it should be a big deal for everybody but for me you know good characters, good actors and actresses can make or break any TV show and so far I'm really liking the characters. I'm really like pretty much all the characters are making me feel something whether it's a good thing a bad thing they're making me feel something and that's that that's always good because nothing is worse than watching a bunch of characters that you feel nothing for you know you don't feel any emotion at all for you, they're, they're just kind of there and you don't really care yeah so I'm glad that that's not the case with this show so far and um yeah I'm really liking this so far, people. I truly think, now I am, I am a little bit nervous though because this is a Disney Plus um, exclusive, which means it's only gonna be on Disney Plus. It's not gonna be on Disney Channel or Free Freeform or ABC Family or anything. So, I mean, that's okay with me because I have Disney Plus, so I'm, I'm gonna watch every episode regardless, but not everybody can afford that so i feel like there's gonna be a lot of a lot of people that want to see this show or would otherwise watch this show if it was on disney channel that's not gonna watch it now since it's on disney plus so i hope that doesn't like hurt it, like the you know the 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 chances of this getting many seasons and also something else that just hit me just now is disney plus gonna have the same rules as disney as far as like the whole like never go past three or four seasons type of thing hopefully not hopefully disney plus can have some shows where they actually go past season four that would be amazing okay amazing but um either way we already know that that this show is at least getting two seasons because it's already been renewed so that's good but anyways people let me know what you guys thought about this episode i'm kind of rambling at this point and um are you leaning any any which way or, or do you have a favorite ship so far or do you have are you like me and you kind of have to see more um 
I need to see more, although I have to say I'm definitely le leaning towards Ricky and Nini right now just because they're way more interesting to me. Um, they have more of an interesting story behind them too. Um, but I definitely need to see more before I make that final decision on who I'm going to ship. But we'll see what happens. Let me know what you guys think though. And um, if you guys want to keep seeing more reviews and videos in general about this show going forward... Let me know in the comment section, Piper. But, um, I think I pretty much said all I wanted to say in this video, so, uh, I think, I think that I'm done talking. Uh, check out that Patreon link in the description box. Until next time.